The Western Cape responds to more than 15,000 reports of fire outbreaks each year and this year the Department of Local Government will allocate 16 million rands towards firefighting. Now, as the province prepares for the wildfire season, which traditionally runs from November to May, the Western Cape MEC for Local Government, Environmental Affairs and uh, Development and Planning, that's uh, Anton Bredel, he visited the Newlands Fire Base Station in Cape Town to discuss the plans with senior firefighting officials there. Well, let's speak to one of those uh, firefighting officials, and his name is Colin Diner, uh, Chief Director for Disaster Management there. Mr. Diner, thank you very much for your time. Uh, before we talk about the discussions between yourself and the MEC, let's start with how prepared you are for this next fire season. We know how intense a period this becomes. Uh, thanks. Good morning, Tolly. Nice to be here. I think uh, what's important to realize is, you know, this is uh, 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 the fire season in the Western Cape is something that, that we've been dealing with for many, many years. And uh, quite a couple of years ago, about 10, 12 years ago, we decided to go a different route in increasing our resources and uh, being a much more proactive and also integrating our response more. And really what that means is bringing in all the resources that you know, that are involved in firefighting. That includes people like uh, South African National Parks, Cape Nature, our municipalities, and to have much more of an integrating response where we're able to, um, you know, respond earlier to fires. We've increased our aircraft resources. Uh, we also appoint a lot of seasonal firefighters in different areas who come in and work, you know, during the wildfire season. So I think I'd say that, you know, we've put in the kind of preparation that we normally do, um, and generally, you know, um, we, we, we understand the risk to a very large extent. Obviously, you're going to get fires um, mm. that, that uh, might be, uh, you know, much bigger than what we anticipated. Uh, things do happen like that. But I think generally our preparation has been, you know, on par on what it should be. Yeah. Let's tease out that um, integrated approach, Mr. Diner. Uh, talk to us about... What exactly is involved there? Because I suppose that's exactly where your strategy is to try and deal with this. It's something that almost seems unavoidable. It takes place almost every year. And so surely with the years that you've been involved in this now, you should be able to deal with it slightly better. Yeah, I think the important thing is that, you know, we have to understand our risk, where our risk areas are. So at the end of our, of our, of our previous fire season, we already start planning for the next season. We look at which areas were the most severely damaged. We look at what kind of, uh, uh, lessons we learned in our firefighting operations. Uh, and then we determine, for example, where do we place our resources? You know, the amount of aircraft and firefighters sounds like a lot, but if you look at just how large the area is, um, what we also do is we do a lot of proactive work in terms of making sure that, you know, fire breaks are put in, that a lot of awareness is done. We obviously have a big challenge in what we call the urban-rural interface, where you see a lot of people living very close um, to the rural environment. Um, we look, do a lot of fire protection in those areas. And then it's really just a question of making sure that in our planning we have all the different role players, um, that they are prepared in terms of resources, uh, we put a lot of money into those resources. We also contract aircraft for the, the season together with a couple of like the, the uh, like Sand Parks, City of Cape Town, Cape Winans District. We also contract aircraft. We place them strategically. And then, of course, the important thing is early warnings. The moment you get a fire in an area that's high risk, we will respond very quickly. We prioritize areas like, for example, in November, we have um, a lot of harvesting going on on the West Coast area. So we'll make sure that those areas are covered. And then it's really for that entire season, it's a daily kind of um, activity of looking at what are the risk areas for the day, making sure that, you know, that we have resources in place to be able to, to deal with those risks. And if we do get the major fire, which inevitably we get, um, is to make sure that we can move a lot of resources to those areas when it's required. Yeah. You talk about the early warning systems and Included in there will be the element around the rapid response strategy. 
and this is something that the MEC uh, seems to be harping on a lot more because the understanding is that if this strategy is carried out almost with precision, then it is the one strategy that helps in putting out these fires a lot more quicker. Yes, I think the important thing with firefighting, whether it's a structural fire, whether it's a factory fire, whether it's a wildfire, is the quicker you get your resources to the incident, the quicker you can get control over it. So what we did is around 10 years ago, we looked at what uh, is done in, for example, the United States, specifically in California with their rapid attack or initial attack program. And what we found in the past was, you know, aircraft are expensive. To deploy them is, is not an, a, a cheap uh, a cost. And what we found was people were reluctant to call out the aircraft in the initial stages of a fire just because of that very high cost. So we really turned that around. And what we said was the province would, would uh, uh, invest substantially into it. And I think since around 2014, we've invested around 125 million rand into this program. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we have told the incident commanders on the ground who were the first responders, if you get to an incident and you see that this is a potential serious incident, call for the resources immediately. So the rapid attack really means that we send the aircraft in the first couple of minutes of a fire, and then we try and control it uh, to stop it from becoming that massive fire, which eventually will cost, you know, many times uh, what it would have. And uh, although it's an expensive exercise, 95% uh, of the fires uh, over the last couple of years that we've responded to, we've been able to control in the first hour. Yeah. So that's something that we put a lot of attention on and, and obviously put a lot of resources into. And just still on that uh, aerial support, that means using your uh, helicopters that help you uh, fight this a lot quicker. The understanding is that the success rate has been really high. I'm looking at figures of 90% here. Is that indeed correct? Are you able to flesh out more what that success rate has looked like in the past couple of years? Yeah. Yeah, it, it is, uh, it is pretty much the, uh, we work between 90 and 95% of the fires. I think what's important to, to realize is although we see the big fires and they're the ones that, that, you know, get, get covered in the media, et cetera, we have so many fires. You mentioned the number earlier of the number of fires that we respond to. So we would in the summer um, months and specifically, I would say, uh, around the middle of December to, to pretty much April, somewhere in April, we would respond to almost two, three fires a day as far as using our aerial resources, our aircraft. So not only do we use helicopters, we also use fixed wing aircraft, which can drop a, a much uh, three times the load of, of most of our helicopters. Um, so what we do is um, we would, as I say, we would respond very quickly. We have a number of air bases. So we have seven uh, main bases where we place all our resources. They are all over the province. And uh, in total, we have 31 air bases. So uh, many of them are, 23 of them are secondary bases where we can go and, you know, land our aircraft, replenish, uh, uh, refuel, etc. Yeah. So the, the whole, you know, it's, it's a huge plan uh, and, and it looks, as I said, at risk. Um, and that changes. Our risk might change, you know, from January to February or from December to, to January. It might be a different area that's at higher risk. It all depends on a lot of conditions, mostly weather conditions, also the environment, um, you know, the occupation of land, etc. So all those things come into, you know, the planning and that we use to be able to respond. Uh, and I think the quick response is really what helps us a lot. Let's then conclude the conversation with uh, the element of human error. The warnings to people, especially during this season, Someone might be smoking a cigarette and they throw the butt um, on the floor only to trigger a fire. And I remember now uh, one of the highly publicized incidents of someone who had been accused of almost deliberately starting this fire. I'm not sure where that case ended. What would your warning be to the general public, especially if they are out in the bush? Yeah, I think it's important, you know, over December, January, it's, it's a, a holiday time in the Western Cape. So obviously, we, you know, we don't want people not to go out and to enjoy themselves. But I think it's really about being responsible. Um, so you get fires either started, um, you know, through arson, through somebody doing it, uh, 
uh, you know, on purpose, and that is obviously a criminal act. Then you get negligence like cigarettes and the incident you mentioned, which happened in Pringle Bay where somebody shot off a flare over New Year and uh, ignited the area and burnt down several houses. That case is still in court. Um, and then you get just negligence. And I think that's, you know, that's really the issue. So the best advice I can give is we give a lot of warnings on, I think the, there's warnings on, on media all the time. You, you get warnings on television, on radio, on social media. If there are warnings that it is a, a high uh, a risk of fault fires for that day, I think it's about being responsible. If you're going out to make, you know, on certain days, we just won't allow people to make fires outdoors. But on other days, be responsible. If you have made a fire, make sure it's in a safe area designated for a fire, uh, you know, for a briar or whatever the case may be. And when you leave, make sure that fire is extinguished. So, uh, you know, it's not that we want to stop everything. I think people just need to be responsible in the areas that they are. Yeah. And uh, that will help us a lot. And, of course, the most important thing is, you know, we've spoken a lot about the rapid attack, uh, identifying the fire early and responding. So if people see fires specifically over this area, a very small fire can become a massive incident, report them very early. And I think that's the important messages that I could give. Colin Diner, let me thank you very much for your time. You. Colin is a Chief Director of Disaster Management in the city of Cape Town.